And welcome back to the 42nd Sun and Fun International Fly-In and Convention here. This is Ben Coleman, one of your hosts for the Florida Aviation Network. We can be viewed at www.floridaaviationnetwork.com. And as usual, we try to bring you the most compelling, informative, and um, entertaining uh, guest here on the site here at the Florida Aviation or Florida Air Museum, used to be the Florida Aviation, but uh, today is no different, and this is no different uh, session, except we happen to have one of the most, one of the foremost entertainer groups that has ever been in the air show industry, and that can be done other than the Aeroshell team. There we go. We have uh, we have Mark, we have Steve, we have Brian, we have uh, everybody but, oh, there's one missing, Gene Ooh. McNeely. <laughs> oh, uh, is Gene up today or did he, oh, yeah, did he's you up. wake him up? Yeah, uh, he's up. Did he's he, out doing what he does best. That's He's out selling. He's out talking. <laughs> I know what Gene does. All right, Gene, uh, we're going to pick on you for that one, buddy. But anyway, Mark, Steve, and Brian. You guys, anybody that has ever been to an air show, they always see the air, uh, the air shell team. And it's always a, a very well orchestrated uh, maneuver uh, that you do. And it, there's never any doubt as to how it's gonna wind up because you guys always do a good job of whatever you do. Well, thank you. But how do you do it oh, so often, so well, you come from different parts of the country, you, you happen to all meet in the same spot, and uh, are there any challenges that come up with that from time to time? Well, certainly there are challenges. Uh, you know, every show site we do is always, it's different. And, and not necessarily the layout of, on, the, on the ground, but just, you know, the, the, you have different uh, weather conditions, the winds, the, the, uh, the density of altitude, all those things change every time we fly. It can be the same show site, but do a couple of two or three different uh, performances, and the wind can be different, uh, the heat can be different, and that changes. You know, airplanes are are very uh, don't have a whole lot of excess uh, power, and so you know, uh, and the, if we get a, a wind from the right or a wind from the left or on crowd or off crowd, it changes everything that we do. But we've been doing it long enough that we adapt, and it becomes almost seamless. Mm. Well, it's seamless from the ground. It really is, and uh, if you guys make mistakes or screw up, nobody knows it but you. Yeah. Well, it's amazing, you know, when we're in the airplane, or if you put uh, cameras on in the airplane, you see a lot of movement, but then somebody will be shooting a video at the same time from the ground, and it's, it's movements you don't see. And and not only that, what we end up doing is is we actually change the, uh, the formations, because the idea is what we're doing, we're trying to build a perspective from the ground. And so what a lot of times, if you stay in a perfect formation and you say, let's just say you did a simple uh, uh, circle in front of the crowd, you could be in perfect formation, but there'll be times where the formation looks like it's out and it's just strictly the perspective. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've you know, watched enough video that said, you know, oh yeah, right here you looked out. Well, I'm, I remember I was in. Well, you, maybe if you were a little high and forward there, it would look straight. So we actually, when I'm flying, Brian and, and Steve actually move their position relative to me, relative to the crowd to make it look symmetrical. So people don't see that from the ground. The Thunderbirds and the Blue Angels do the same thing. Exactly. They look like they're never moving, but they actually move uh, for the angle. It's constantly jostling. And yeah, you're, move. You're yeah, like if I'm flying wing off of his wing and say you're the crowd, I'll try to run from my perspective through Mark to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that looks like a straight line. Mm -hmm. Well, if mm -hmm. I'm up here, well, we're still in a straight line, but you're over there. But now you're blocking Brian. So, so what you <laughs> want to do is either move high and forward, or down and forward, or back. And then, well, you know, the, the the way we maintain consistency is that the show has not really changed in a long time. The, the basic layout and the maneuvers of the routine are the same. Sometimes we may uh, uh, have a challenging box to work in or, or show site to work mm -hmm. and uh, we might be required to do something like uh, that, that's akin to unfolding a, a paper clip you know where, where we have to kind of 
change the angles upon which we do certain maneuvers. And, uh, but uh, each maneuver is in the same sequence and it has the same basic character. And that way we're able to maintain consistency. And it, then all we got to worry about is the anomalies. It took, us, it took us a while to come up with this routine. You just didn't, you know, we started out and then we said, well, if we do this, by just changing one little thing, we picked up 15 miles an hour for the next maneuver. Well, that's energy. Oh, that's, yeah. I call that money in the bank. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So build the money in the bank. Yeah. Well, one so of the, one we, of the things we change we, it up. Yeah, one of the things we do is when we leave any one time that we go to, to, to climb, we're never out of the box more than 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. And so let's say you came in there and we decided, well, let's add one more vertical maneuver. Well, that vertical man maneuver may actually end up where we're now having to climb for two, two and a half minutes to get back the same amount of energy. So we just would cut that out so that, because the idea is we want those to when we can return with the ample uh, amount of energy within 60 seconds. That's kind of been sort of our guideline. And so the whole routine, it's, uh, it's uh, the number of maneuvers that we do always end up to, that, that, so that we're not having to do a minimum amount of climb. Well, it's, it's done very, very well. And it is, like you say, it's energy management from what I've Gather. The I've, I've, not, I've not flown tight formation in an air show before, uh, or at night, but uh, <laughs> but I do understand mm -hmm. the concept of managing your energy. Right. Uh, speaking of managing of energy, I remember when Brian first joined the uh, <clears throat> the team here, and the, you had him as lead. Right. <clears throat> uh, I was talking to Gene McNeely. I said, "Well, Gene, why do you put Brian in charge of everybody? I mean, he's in the lead airplane." And he said, "Well, Ben." That's because it's hard for him to hit anybody when he's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, we were trying. When I, when I started here, they needed a, a lead pilot. Uh, uh, Alan Henley, who started the team with Steve, um, uh, wasn't able to fly anymore. And so uh, I hired on flying his airplane for him. And uh, it was, tr we were trying to figure out the best place to put me. I had experience in all four positions. And, and uh, they were trying to figure out how to mix it up. And it, we, I listened to a bunch of it for a while, and I said, well, look, why don't you do this? Let me get out front and try to stay in the box, and you guys just do what you've been doing for 25 years and fly them <laughs> position. So all they had to do was follow me, you know, and I, I, could, I could fly a mediocre lead, and it, it would still look really good. And, and and so, uh, it listen. takes a while. You can't just join this team, and, and, and I don't care who you are. We've, we've, we've had a lot of people try to join that just – didn't burn it, but and I'm not tooting our horn or anything, but it takes a lot of dedication, and you just don't come in here and fly with us for a two week, three weeks, or a month even, and mm -hmm. and gonna go fly in front of a crowd in an air show. Ain't gonna, you just can't do it. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take months, if not years. Jimmy Fordham has joined us, and he's been flying with us now for what three years? Yeah, about three years. And he's just now beginning to, to fly air shows with us. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes. It, it's an evolution. Uh, I'm the only original member still on the team. Alan and I started the team 32 years ago, 33? Yeah. Well, it's the 32nd season. All right, 32nd, 32nd season. If you look at some of our first videos, you'd see why. <laughs> some of the first videos were, you know, we're out here and we're learning. And then as you, it's like anything else, you get better at it and you get better at it. And, you, and my dad always told me a secret. I ain't a secret, but he just always told me when it's I was... It's not a secret now. Was, <laughs> when you fly formation, he gave me some great advice. And this is for anybody that's trying to get into formation flying and decide they want to try this. You remember that I told you this. You fly where you're comfortable and you'll be safe. If you get up there and you're nervous, you're not going to do a good job. You're going to overthink it. You're going to get PIO, pilot induced oscillation. You're not going to be flying. You're not going to be learning anything on top of that. Mm -hmm. Back it out to where you're comfortable, and then you'll learn something. And then all of a sudden, you'll be a little, little bit, and then a little bit. The next thing you know, you're doing it, and you're going, wow, how'd I get here? Mm -hmm. So that's my advice. Don't ever fly formation and be uncomfortable. Uh, you won't learn anything. You, want, you, you well, just won't learn anything. Well, the, the, the thing that you guys uh, pretty well emulate is uh, the ultimate pilotage. You, you do things smooth. You do it uh, premeditated. You do it consistently. You do everything that really uh, discusses 
what we are in aviation to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do it professionally, you do it on time, you do it on target. You, you, it's just all the superlatives. Of well, it's a choreographed routine. Sure, and it's it's, 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 it's choreographed, and and you have to do it that way. You just mm -hmm. can't throw a wrench in it <coughs> because it won't work. And and you know, routine goes far beyond just the set of maneuvers. You know, it's like uh, yeah, I used to play golf a lot, and they teach you most important thing. One of the most important things is your pre-shot routine to do every do approach it the same way every time mm -hmm. consistently. Mm -hmm. And so it's like getting up in the morning you know we get out to the airport i get to the car first and uh and kind of set the tone get everybody on, on, up to speed and we uh we just kind of set the tone for the day that way and then uh when it comes time to get in the airplane and fly i mean we set aside an, an hour before to kind of get our heads together and we'll mm -hmm. walk through the r routine and uh, uh sometimes anyway I, and, right. uh, most and, of the time. But, it's, it's but we got our, we got our heads into it and uh and but just keeping that that's it's all part of that same routine and, you and all of that works together for sure you have to mm -hmm. i mean like I said, i've been flying air shows for over 35 36 years and i always tell myself okay you know this is not just another air show when you go get an airplane beforehand get your psyche get your game on you mean you started flying when you were 10 years old? No. Come on, Steve. <laughs> I flew my first oh, no. air show for the, with the CAF when I was 19. And I'm 55 now, so what is that? I got a picture of him. Let me get my calculator out. Wait a minute. Anyway, I got a picture I, of him standing on top of a Stearman at 15. On his dad's yeah, well, dad actually, said. I was younger than that. I did a wing ride. I stood on top of yeah. the wing when his, I was 12. His sister used to wing do it, walker. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was a... Uh, and when I was 12. My sister did it a lot more than I did. I was so skinny, my dad was real, didn't want to have me up there. <laughs> so he put a pillow behind me to, so the belts would tighten up. He put a sticky belt. <laughs> and I have people laughing. They're like, your dad puts you up there, your mom and dad puts you up there when you're 12 years on top of a steerman doing airbags. I said, well, they didn't like me very much. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like Brian's parents. Yeah. They moved a lot when he was younger, but he uh, always found them. Yeah, well, they, well that's what they, they should have never published their address. That's the problem. Uh, <laughs> but it's all in good fun. We all really get along real well, and that's another rule we have. You know, if you get a team members that don't get along, get ready, they're not going to fly together very well either. Mm -hmm. when, when we get through flying in the evening, we go out, go out to eat with each other. Yeah. Uh, we go out and go do things together. So, yeah. And you see what, what happens going. here, you know, it's kind of, it's really kind of our culture from the South, yeah. you know, that, but uh, it, it, and it seems funny, but it's like, what I've learned is people from the South test each other all the time to see, <laughs> to make sure we're we're good, right? Oh, yeah. And they so you're, you're always time. trying picking really on each pick other. On me, though, <laughs> well, you're an easy mark. <laughs> yeah. But it, it just comes natural though to, for us to try and make each other laugh all you know every once sure. in a while to, to to make sure we we keep an even. And that's strength. part of the fun of it. We yeah. we've well. been from El Salvador, Central America, Acapulco to Nova Scotia, Canada. We've flown all over the United States, and I still enjoy it. I mean, you, the camaraderie, I mean, we come here to Sun and Fun and go to Oshkosh. It, it's just neat seeing people again like you, Ben. I haven't yeah. seen you in a while. So, you know, we, we, meet, we get really great friends on the road. Well, and that's the thing about it is uh, when you have these fly-ins, that, that's the fly-in portion of exactly. the convention. That's it's what not, they're doing. It's not just, just uh, selling stuff. Thing it's for just, us. It's same a chance thing. to see his friends. You know, the exactly. one thing that happens, we we have people come up, young young adults come walking up, and, and I guess we've been doing it long enough. They go, hey, I remember the first time I saw y'all, I was six years old. And they, <laughs> that doesn't you know, make you feel They're like, wait a minute, how old are you? <laughs> oh, we run into them a bunch. Now, I, I used to tell people, I said, uh, I've been flying so long now, I run into people, yeah, I'm flying for such and such airline now, such and such airline. And now I'm running to people say, yeah, I retired. I flew with you when I was 12 and I retired from such and such airline now. I'm like, reality check. Uh -oh. so, Wait, is the heart still tough? Yeah, yeah the heart still pattering, but uh, it, it is always a good uh, good thing to see you guys. I, and Gene, I wish he was here. I do like to pick on Gene, but because uh, he's so pickable, kind of like yeah, Steve. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, I can dish it out. But um, <laughs> uh, maintenance-wise, you know, I'm a mechanic by trade, and I know both, well, hell, all you guys are mechanics, but uh, except for Brian, he used to call himself one. But <laughs> the, uh, 
maintenance wise, do you have problems with your airplanes? I mean, I these mean, are old, these are old machines. Well, you got to realize they're you know they're built World War II. I yeah. mean, they're old machines. The technology is '30s technology, but the thing is, back then everything was overbuilt, mm -hmm. and the airplanes are actually very reliable. Now they may not be maybe as reliable as some of the brand new airplanes, but they're still very reliable. Yeah, about I mean, the only thing is corrosion that we've got to watch out for, and, and we've got a great chemical, is ACF 50, is one of our sponsors. Mm -hmm. I, every annual, I put that in there, and it's just amazing. I had some frost, didn't have any corrosion, but internally in my wings, you know mm -hmm. the frost that you'll mm -hmm. end up mm -hmm. getting? I started doing that, next thing you know, I started seeing some pattern, and you could read Alcoa all of a sudden. Mm. It's, too, it, it's all gone now. Y'all mm -hmm. look inside my wings, they look like brand new. Mm -hmm. So that's what you yeah. got to do with a lot of these airplanes to get older, is corrosion is one of the main things you got to watch for, and, and that's one thing we really watch for big time. Mm -hmm. right. Because we want to keep these airplanes around for somebody else to fly. Sure. We're like, like Lee Lauderback said, we're just the keepers of the keys. Exactly. Yeah. Well, one thing you know, that everybody, you know, they, you, most people do an annual inspection. Well, the thing is, you know, we put enough time on the airplanes that, you know, even though we're not required not required by FAA regulation to do anymore, but I mean, I look at my airplane actually weekly. I mean, when I get home from an air show, I do. I, all my friends know I do maintenance Monday, mm -hmm. and I go out and I just, you know, if I, you know, there's a certain if I'm gonna change oil or or do some kind of uh, uh, work in a particular area, and I make an inspection of the whole area, and of course we know we've got. Uh, certain items that that are more problems than other, mm -hmm. and that, I may, you know, I may inspect the tailwheel assembly, all the steering linkages and everything, mm -hmm. and do that on a regular basis, just so that you know that uh, when you're going out for the show the next week, the airplane's in first class shape. Well, that's what it should be because the annual inspection really should just be a paper exercise. Right. Exactly. You, you're constantly exactly. doing maintenance right. on the airplanes. The pros do anyway. Right. Uh, no, we do. And uh, I tell you, uh, what's your uh, I mean, I haven't seen any movies of the air show team yet. Mm. Is there going to be the air show team movie? <laughs> never never, never had anybody <laughs> ask that one before. They a did a documentary. Movie. I don't know if anybody gets online, they should look up. You'll see my T6, my dad flying it. There was a. It's on YouTube. It's called Country Boy, and it's about my dad. He was a. Uh, he was country before country was cool. Like Barbara <laughs> Mandrell when it came to Warbirds, he mm -hmm. used to fly with the CAF. He flew everything they had from ME 109s, P 47s, Corsairs, Mustang, you name it, he flew them all back in the 60s. Mm, yeah. And he used to say, he said, you know, when the rich boys figure out how much fun we're having, this is, this is and sure enough, I mean, they that's found what out. they found exactly. out and they figured out how much fun they were having. And, but anyway, if you'll go to YouTube and, and Google up Merle country boy or Merle crop duster mm -hmm. you'll pull it up and it's a neat deal it's a yeah. tribute to a movie a biography basically about my dad and him flying mm -hmm. the dc3 and my t6 was painted like a german mm -hmm. well there weren't any german airplanes there was me 109 but they didn't use it for that so they painted mine like a german and we go up dog fighting stuff. Yeah. yeah, it was, was, pro it was professionally he got produced. Shot down a lot. <laughs> yeah. I sure did. Yeah, it was professionally produced in uh, uh, what seventy two around there. Seventy three. Seventy three, and, uh, and uh, they did a great job with it. Yeah, we'll have to pull that up. You will. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and I didn't. You know, been out for a long time, and a friend of mine posted on YouTube, and it is, it's got a bunch of hits on it. I mean, people like it. it you know. the, the the only movies I've seen of you guys, I think uh, Brian. He was a star in uh, Amelia. Right. Amelia. Yeah, yeah he yeah. had a star role in that. I, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, he's told us about that. Where were you in that? <laughs> I'm the star of the cutting room. But, uh, well, my, yeah. my, all of our airplanes, this is one of the main questions that people ask us. You know, who owns your airplanes? Is Aeroshell on your airplanes? No, they don't. But our, we, we, each of us own our airplanes individually. Hmm. He owns his, I own mine. And, and Alan, uh, Alan still has right. his yeah. airplane. So yeah. basically the sponsors, they, they, they help support a billboard, a flying hmm. billboard. And I, my airplane was actually, my dad and four other guys purchased it the year I was born in 1960. Paid twelve hundred dollars for it. <laughs> the very one I'm flying with the team and that country boy film, you'll see it flying. 
Yeah. Twelve hundred dollars. Uh, the airplane yeah. Brian flies. It was in Tora, 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 and, and Battle of Mid uh, uh, Warner Members, Battle of Midway. Is a whole bunch of the uh, uh, movies that were made back in the late sixties and hmm. early seventies. And, uh, and then it, of course, then it was sold surplus from the movie company, and it ended up after uh, I think uh, either one or two hundred changes back to Alabama. So we've had it ever since. We bought it. My dad bought it in '73, and we've had it ever since. Wow, well, you guys are uh, you just having too much fun still. <laughs> yeah, we do. I and, have to admit, uh, and, we and, do uh, have, we enjoy. And it. I, I remember, uh, I still remember seeing that cut at ICAST of Alan coming down in the cub, laying on the water, oh. water skiing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, that's just classic, and uh, he's in, in, in all all due respect. Alan is a uh, hell of a man. Yeah, well, yeah. he'll he'll be here later this week. He's coming uh, down. Look, he and I started him. the team together. Look forward and, to seeing. And, him. and all it was, we just said, he, I said, I always want to try a, a loop or a barrel roll on another T6. And he said, Well, you can fly my wing, and that's how it started. Cool. Here we are yeah. today. Well, so. he's uh, I mean, he's he's a, a testament to. Uh, to being a, a real a real man. He I tell is. You what. We've had a lot of good times together. Yeah. Uh, well, guys, we're going to. Uh, what are you going to give to us today? You're not flying today. No. But uh, we'll fly you'll tomorrow. be flying tomorrow. And the night show, of course, on, you always we'll light fly up the tonight. night show on Saturday. Saturday night. Yeah. We fly um, the day yeah. show Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then the night show Saturday. Well, well, we're going to come out and see you, and uh, we promise not to interrupt your practice routine like everybody usually does. Yeah. Hey, Mark, they want to come up and talk, but <laughs> That's uh, okay. Brian, That's Steve, okay. Mark, thanks for showing up here. Uh, we're going to knock it off, let you guys pick, get back to sign your autographs and do whatever you do out in the crowd. Sounds good. Uh, but th uh, thank again, you, thank always you. a pleasure. Thank thanks, you, for, thanks for coming to visit right. us here. Thank you, Dan. We'll see Great you. seeing you, sir. <laughs> All right, guys. And we're going to knock it off on this interview, but uh, we're going to do it again. Come back and see us. Ben Coleman, Florida Aviation Network, see you.